Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Mobius Front 83 for what might actually this time no foolin' be the climactic mission. I gotta tell you, I'm as conflicted here as I've ever been in a war game. We're probably gonna blow up Randy, right? That's tough, that's tough to get through, that's tough to make myself click the button through. And yet, somehow we persevere. Okay, so I get five points, destroy the generator, and they get zero points of deployment, but you gotta assume they got stuff. So this will be our gate generator, and all we get is this thing. So <laughs> we have a team that has a B-54 demolition munition, you know, the atomic kind. <clears throat> I mean, nothing for it but to drive forward, right? If this turns out not to be a uh, viable plan, I guess we're going to find out real soon here. I mean... It's got to be defended, right? Let's just move up to here. Just trying to make sure that I have, like, vision. Maybe there's not going to be anything here at all? In fact, is the enemy force getting a turn? I don't think they are. Yeah, no, they're not. Okay, so they're... <clears throat> there's absolutely nothing to do except to deploy. Well, it feels like it would be very silly to get the rifle team out of the truck, then. Uh, good luck, you guys. Have fun with that. I guess the truck can move adjacent, and we can, we can try to pick them up and drive away as quickly as possible afterward. This is a really interesting way of framing this mission. I'm, I'm super curious, narratively, what we're going to do here. Oh, we didn't bring any fuses. Or an, okay. I mean, I guess I know that people were talking like they weren't going to come back, but I don't know. I guess I just thought that was long war soldier fatalism. Man, I better be promoted soon. After all that shit. I just want to know why we have to be disinfected every time we patrol the perimeter. They don't know if being close exposes us to something. It's natural they'd want to keep an eye on us. Oh, alien cooties. Got it. You know what's weird? That trucks is gone. It's not weird. He had a death wish from day one. He got what he wanted. I keep thinking I see him here on base. Then I look closer and it's some other guy. He's fucked up, because I don't miss him. He's lucky in a way. I'd rather be MIA than stuck on patrol around the gate for the rest of my life. I don't know. Maybe it means he lives on inside you. I don't I don't think that's a comforting thought. Again, nobody seems to have liked him. We'll always have these memories, you know. And no one can take them from us. <laughs> it don't mean shit, Grail. It don't mean shit. My fellow Americans, several weeks ago, we were taken by surprise by the appearance of several dark zones in the central regions of the United States. Investigating these regions, we encountered an unknown military force that bore a striking resemblance to our own. These forces were actively hostile and immediately captured large portions of land inside Illinois and Wisconsin. After the eruption of violence, we were able to establish diplomatic channels with representatives of these people, which initial reports erroneously described as originating from the Soviet Union. They are not Soviet, or even Russian. But make no mistake, though these forces claim to be from a world similar to our own, they are assuredly not Americans. Though they initially claimed their world was dying due to a changing orbit, we soon learned the real reason behind their aggressive and unfounded action. They attacked us because their world was ravaged by a type of organism so aggressive and virulent that it must never be allowed on American soil. Not now and not ever. After recognizing the grave threat that this alien organism posed to our nation, 
the Joint Chiefs of Staff and I work to create a plan to protect the country from this new and heretofore unknown danger. We had little time and knew that complete secrecy was vital to ensure both the safety of the young men who would undertake this mission and the Americans they were about to protect. One week ago today, at 35 minutes past 7 central time, a large contingent of U.S. military forces entered the dark zones and crossed the quantum gates located inside. Our troops fought hard to establish a foothold in this strange and unforgiving land. A few days later, engineers from the 1st Army Corps of Engineers placed nuclear charges near the gate generators and destroyed them irrevocably, sealing that world's fate, and sadly, their own. I believe those engineers and all those who supported their mission, living and dead, have lived up to the very best ideals of what it means to be American. Now, we must remain vigilant. In addition to patrols along the perimeter of the former dark zones, we also have begun an urgent research and development effort to understand exactly what happened and why. There is no guarantee a similar event couldn't happen in the future. And, as Vice President Bush has so astutely noted, no guarantee that there aren't thousands or even millions of other worlds out there looking towards ours as a target for conquest. I will not ask you to pray for the dead because they're safe in God's loving arms and beyond need of our prayers. I would like to ask you all, wherever you may be in this blessed land, to pray for the young men wounded in this action and to pray for the bereaved families of those who gave their lives to protect this great nation. God bless you and God bless America. That's, that's actually, huh. <clears throat> I mean, that's strange, right? It makes sense. It sort of makes sense in a, like, no, honestly, it doesn't. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm trying to, why, why introduce the stuff about trucks going missing? I, there's not really, I, there's not really a narrative arc to speak of, right? The style of this game's narrative de delivery is extremely weird. Like, they establish all these characters, but they don't make any attempt to tell a story with any of them, except maybe, like, you could say that there's at least a portion of a story happening with, um, uh, bloody hell, what's his name? The guy I like. The one, the one with the Jeep falling out of the air, right? He's driving his, uh, he's driving his erstwhile driver back after that guy's wounded like that's that's one beat of a story but for most of the rest of it it's real just like vignette day in the life of a soldier stuff and they introduce a single plot element <laughs> with uh with trucks going missing and then it's just huh why even include that it feels to me like like we're missing something, like there should be something more, but I I mean there's not, right? There's definitely not. We got a cheat we got you won the game achievements and everything. So I guess that's it. Apologies for the final episode being in the end. <laughs> perhaps, as I as I had guessed, a little anticlimactic. Um Yeah, this game is really baffling to me. I, <laughs> I don't understand a lot of the decision making. Behind it. I'm going to need to think about this one before I'm going to have anything intelligent to say. Apologies that, like, I went dark for two days and then posted a ten-minute episode, but, uh, unfortunately, real life and stuff. I've had a lot of, uh, upheavals and my mom got the COVID and stuff, so it's been, it's been a rough one. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have to think about this a little bit and see if I can't... I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Obviously... 
I've ta- talked a lot about how I don't think the mechanics are very satisfying as, like, the mechanics of a tactics game that's intended to be competitive and interesting. But I do think they're quite functional as the mechanics of a game that has some pretty negative feelings about war and about the the way that we relate to each other in war, not just fellow soldiers, but also the people on the other side and the kind of dehumanization that is totally bullshit that goes on with that. Um, these are all viewpoints that I myself hold, so I get I, I think I get what they're laying down. We definitely... We definitely put too much weight on games trying to be, like, fun and balanced in a chess sort of way and not enough on using mechanics to deliver narrative and theme. And I think this game does a good job of that, of the latter. Um, yeah, like I said, I guess we're just going to call it here for right now. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to think about this a little bit and see if I can't suss out exactly how I feel about the narrative style. It's very unusual. It almost has like a little bit of a um like a band of brothers kind of feel, right? Where you get like you have a couple of different strands of narrative and there's a lot of little scenes in there that aren't necessarily about the advancement of story but are about establishment of character and again like day in the life kind of stuff. But why didn't they do anything with it? Why did they pretend they were about to do something with it? And yeah, I don't know. That's very strange. All right. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, come back sometime in the near future for my thoughts on this game that was not at all what I thought it was going to be. And come back on Monday for some new exploratory stuff. We're going to be um, shooting through a bunch of games in quick succession as I try to, you know, cover all of the uh, all of the gems that came out in 2020 that we didn't have time for. And we'll see you then.